Hello, I'm Janice Thompson, and I'm the lead author of The Science of Nutrition. In this segment, we're going to touch upon some key aspects involved in digesting and absorbing our food and nutrients, and also suggestions for ways to enhance your understanding of the material. So in trying to understand digestion, um, we have to think about these things as complex interconnected processes. It involves eating, digesting food and absorbing nutrients, and then of course eliminating waste. So a good way to approach challenging material like this is to break it down into simpler components such as the key concepts, systems and functions. So let's start with a simple question, why do we eat? Well, there's really some obvious reasons you might think about of why you want to eat, and those are the sensory types of things, which includes um, stimulation from sight, smell, and taste. Also, food textures affect whether we find a food appealing or not, whether we'd like to eat it, whether we might crave it. Um, a good example for me is garbanzo beans. I really can't stand the texture of garbanzo beans. However, I love hummus, which is made from garbanzo beans. So that's an example of how texture can affect uh, why we eat. Um, and then there's two terms you really need to be able to understand. Um, the first is appetite, and that's a psychological desire for us to eat. And it's influenced by different factors, particularly social ones, such as possibly going to an event, um, a party, maybe after you've had a full dinner, but you still want to eat more because things look, smell um, really good. Um, the other term is hunger, and that's actually a physiological sensation that prompts us to eat. So that's when the body really triggers us and said, we really do need to eat. So what happens when we eat food? Well, as you go through the chapter, you'll see there's three main processes that are highlighted. The first is digestion, the second is absorption, and the third is elimination. And to understand these, that brings us to having to understand the functions of what we call the GI tract, or the gastrointestinal tract. So we want to start basically in order of when you start to eat. So when you eat something, you put it in your mouth, you start to chew. So really digestion begins in our mouths and a, just a little bit of digestion goes, th goes on there. But really in the mouth, it's primarily to break up our food, get it into manageable size so that it can continue on through our gastrointestinal tract. Once we swallow, the food is gonna travel through a tube that runs from the mouth to the stomach and that's called the esophagus. And the esophagus propels food into our stomach through a process called peristalsis. And gravity also assists in bringing food down to the stomach. Once food arrives in the stomach, um, it's mixed up. There's a small amount of digestion that occurs there, not a lot, but a little bit. And it actually stores food for a limited period of time um, so that it can um, release it over um, in small amounts into the next part of the intestinal tract, which is the small intestine. And that's really where most of the digestion and absorption take place. So after we've gone through an extensive digestion and absorption process in the small intestine, whatever's left the remaining food mass passes through into the large intestine and then anything that remains from there we eliminate out of our bodies. So some important digestion basics that you need to understand and you'll see some key terms, enzymes, uh, which are chemical substances that help speed up processes and actually help processes occur. Um, faster and better than they would without the enzymes. We also have things called hormones, and those are produced in other organs, and then they are transported around the body when we need to use them. And then we also have accessory organs, things like the gallbladder, the pancreas, and the liver. And the gallbladder is really important for storing bile, which helps us break up fat. Um, and the pancreas helps produce a number of hormones and enzymes that are critical. And the liver is really um, like a machine that processes everything that we consume. So they're very important organs. So we need to think about the absorption and transport of nutrients um, and it happens in an interconnected system. The small intestine is really an interesting place because if you just looked at it from a distance, it would look like a very smooth tube. But really, the small intestine has a specialized lining, cell membrane lining, that helps facilitate different types of absorption. And it's actually very ridgy and bumpy, and you'll see that within the text in the photos, that actually if you can microscopically look at the small intestine, it expands its surface area 500 times more than if it were truly flat 
which it appears to the naked eye. So that's a really important feature of the small intestine. And then we have two key fluids that help us to absorb and transport nutrients. The first is blood, and the second is lymph. And these both help us transport different types of nutrients and waste products throughout the body. So how do we manage these connected systems? How does that really work? Well, it's really done by two key components, our nerves and our muscles. And they really work together to coordinate and regulate this whole process. And we call this the neuromuscular system. And it connects and coordinates the activities of several other systems to move food all throughout the gastrointestinal tract and control all aspects of digestion, absorption, and elimination. So really the takeaway message from this session is that there are, as you're going to learn, a lot of other details about digestion, absorption, and elimination, and you really need to understand um, how the body uses and processes food. Um, but a way to start, I think, the easiest way is to stand back and really think about the bigger picture of the body. Think about consuming some type of food. And we give you an example of the book on how to do this. And you actually just start with that and think about the big picture and where that food might go. And then as you go through the directions as the food moves through the gastrointestinal tract, then you can start to look a bit more closely at each of those pieces, taking them apart, looking at them in depth, and then putting them back together to see where you end up. And so if you break down this complex material into smaller aspects and key components, it really helps you learn the information a lot better.